Hey guys, Chris here from DZB Express TV. Um, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what NDI technology is and how it may work for your application. Uh, there's a lot of confusion out there when it comes to how to stream uh, to Facebook or YouTube, what type of cabling to utilize, what type of cameras to use. Um, so I think one thing that's missing is NDI technology, which by definition is a royalty-free software developed by a company called NewTek to enable video compatible products to communicate, deliver, and receive high definition video over a computer network in a high quality, low latency manner that is frame accurate and suitable for switching in a live production environment. Uh, to simplify this, this essentially means that you can stream over your local area network without the requirement for video cables such as HDMI, SDI, or even USB. Um, this technology does not require any other hardware adapters uh, such as HDMI wood or SDI cabling, meaning that our laptops or computers do not have HDMI or SDI inputs. They do have USB, obviously, um, but there are limitations to USB. Uh, with HDMI or SDI cabling, you would require what's called a uh, capture device. So what this does is it takes that signal from that HDMI or from that SDI and converts it into a USB signal that can be inputted into your computer for capturing that video and audio and streaming it into like a software platform such as OBS Studios, vMix, ProPresenter, and whatnot. So let's break down a little bit about the cost regarding NDI technology and uh, in order for you to get a better understanding whether or not it's gonna work for your future applications. So with HDMI, um, typically it's only good for up to about 25 feet. Technically saying 50 feet, but this always um, depends on the device that is sending out that signal, meaning whether that output has good amplification, it can vary from like a DVD player uh, to a computer to a camera. HDMI signals basically, as we mentioned, require a USB capture device for a computer connection. Typically this adds anywhere from $150 to $350 in additional costs in order to purchase this hardware adapter um, for an HDMI conversion to USB. Um, additionally, if the camera is farther than say 25 feet away uh, or 40 feet, but 25 feet for safe standards, you're gonna require an HDMI extender in order to get that signal over to the computer where the capture device is located. HDMI extenders are typically anywhere from like 150 up to uh, you know five, six, seven hundred dollars, depending on how far you need to go. For a 100 foot run, for example, if you were running HDMI out of a camera to a computer, you would require that HDMI uh, cables, of course, uh, the extender, as well as the HDMI capture device, typically ranging about $350 in additional costs. Something to take in consideration. Um, if using a USB uh, connection cable, uh, you know, obviously this simplifies things. You don't need a capture device, which is really cool. Um, however, you know, there are some other aspects to this, especially when it comes to length of cable. Uh, first though, let's note there's two different types of USB that are our primary uh, methods of delivering USB, which is USB 2.0, our older technology, and now USB 3.0. Um, there's actually also USB 3.1, uh, Generation 1, and Gen 2. Uh, Gen 1 is essentially the same as USB 3.0. It's used for marketing a little bit, but technically never was meant for marketing. Um, the Gen 2 uh, differences between that and the uh, USB 3.0 or the Gen 1 3.1 is that the uh, Gen 2 3.1 can do 10 gigabits per second versus 5 gigabits per second. Uh, we're really not seeing anything yet that's uh, delivering that or much equipment out there with 3.1 due to the fact that it's still relatively um, expensive and pretty new. Even USB 3.0 is still costly. Um, so although USB is beneficial in the sense that you don't require a uh, capture device, the major con to running a USB cable is that you are limited to 15 feet. So if you need to go longer than 15 feet um, running a USB 3.0 cable like this, you're gonna need either a USB 3.0 extender or you're gonna need to use an active cable, meaning that it pushes the amplification or a fiber cable in order to generate that, which gets pretty costly. 
Um, USB 2.0 extenders are not too bad. If you end up needing a USB 2.0 extender, you typically can find something depending on how far it's pushing the signal, but um, up to about 150 bucks. If you're using a USB 3.0 extender, you are looking at about $1,000 up right now, uh, which of course someday that'll come down, but again, as it's a newer technology, uh, there's just not enough uh, options out there for the price point to come down at this, at this moment. Um, so you got to take this in consideration. So technically for a 100 foot run on a USB 2.0, if you're adding in the extender and whatnot, you're looking at about 200 bucks. If you're trying to run a USB 3.0 farther than you know 25 feet for a, say a 100 foot run, you're looking at $1,000 up typically. You may find some uh, active cables out there. Uh, typically they're going to be still a few hundred dollars though. Um, so very expensive way to go about unless it's a short run. So you say, okay, I have a long run. I, you know, what's my other option? Well, we have SDI cabling, which is this guy here. It's basically a BNC connector that locks onto your camera. Um, and again, will require a SDI to USB capture device in order to get the signal into your computer. Uh, the benefit to this guy is that the cabling is relatively inexpensive. It's essentially RG6, similar to what Comcast or Xfinity or um, any of your cable companies would utilize, uh, delivering 75 ohms. So you can get this pretty inexpensive. However, um, you know, if you're doing custom lanes, you're going to need to be able to add your connectors, which would require a connector kit or an installer integrator to make that cable for you. Uh, they do have pre-made lengths out there, however, so um, as far as comparing the three options, HDMI, uh, USB, and SDI, this is going to be the most economical and efficient method to deliver your signal. A lot of times overlooked because people just are not familiar with SDI. You're not going to see it at Best Buy typically hanging on a shelf like you will HDMI or USB. It is the professional's choice and a good way to go for anyone who's got a, a longer length than, say, you know, 25 feet. However, NDI is still obviously a great option and that's why we're covering this today. So you just have a better understanding between your four choices of how to get the signal into your computer. So now that we got a better understanding of this, um, let's go and see how exactly an NDI signal is captured and connected to a network. So as you can see here, I have a camera. We've got our network switch here. We are connected with a CAT6 cable, which is preferred over a CAT5, but not required. Um, and this guy is powered with the CAT6 cable, meaning we don't require a power supply for this particular camera. It is PoE, power over ethernet connected. So for one cable, you are set and ready to go. All you need to do is network this camera um, into, your, into your network for your local area network there typically a PoE switch like this guy here, and that's going to give the power and that's going to put it online. You will need to uh, visit our video on how to network uh, your camera to your segment so you can actually see it and it shows up on your computer. So once the camera is networked, uh, you're going to use a web GUI associated with an IP address and a browser such as Chrome, um, Safari, and then that way you can actually see uh, the camera, see what you're doing, pan, tilt, zoom, uh, make adjustments for the video based on the lighting or the environment that maybe there's shadows. So very handy. Um, you're also going to need to go into the menu and most cameras, especially um, ours here, BZB gear cameras, will require an NDI selection box, meaning you need to enable NDI and typically you name it. So that way you can identify the camera uh, when you're trying to capture it through software programs. So uh, here's our web GUI uh, for our camera. As I mentioned, you go into NDI and you can select this and save. Reboot. Press reboot and go. Now, in order to um, capture the signal, so I currently have OBS Studios up as my example software, you are going to need to create a scene, which is automatic, and you're going to have to add an NDI source. 
Now, OBS Studios requires a plugin. So by default, when you download OBS Studios, you're gonna need to do one more step, and that is um, go ahead and Google uh, how to, or sorry, not how to, but where is an NDI plugin for my OBS Studios? There's gonna be a link, and you need to run and install that, and that's gonna create the ability to find the source under the drop-down tree here. So now that I have my NDI source, I'm gonna go ahead and create new. And as you can see here, I have NDI with my uh, MAC address associated. So that way I know I have the right camera identified. Again, you can name it uh, whatever you want right here. I can name source name, NDI HX uh, camera test. And now I know which one it is. Um, go ahead and select OK. And there we go. So now as you can see on my desktop here, I have my guy from BZB Express over on our left and over on our right. I can also switch into my uh, screen here, which is my display I'm currently recording for the benefits of this video. And it's as simple as that. So again, I can delete my NDI source. Yes, delete it. And then now we just have the uh, image there. Once again, if I want to add it, hit plus, NDI source, and it sees NDI source two. We're going to call this NDI test two, just to show the difference. And again, in our drop down tree here, it's going to recognize it via MAC address. And I can relabel it here, but I'm going to hit OK. This is essentially how you're going to capture the NDI. Uh, transmission or signal is by essentially as long as your laptop is on the network, your camera is on the network, you've got the right IP segment or an address going where you're able to you know look at the web GUI then it's as simple as that. The only problem I've ran into sometimes with NDI cameras is if you don't seem to be able to find the camera when using such as OBS Studios or Remix you may want to restart your computer, restart the camera, make sure you don't have anything that may be blocking it as far as McAfee, um, any type of antivirus, because that can actually create issues overall uh, with the uh, NDI showing up. So if you got any questions on that, you can always call our technical support here. Steve's uh, happy to help you troubleshoot that. It shouldn't take more than, you know, five, 10 minutes. So as you can see, uh, the NDI technology is pretty amazing. Uh, for the most part, it's overlooked by the majority of users out there, especially uh, for houses of worship and whatnot, where folks aren't quite as um, techy. They're not used to this camera thing. It's a new type of application they're looking for. Um, maybe it's hard to get an HDMI cable or even our SDI cable, which is less expensive, uh, to the camera location and back to the computer. If so, and you can get a category cable, such as the one plugged in the switch here, uh, to the camera to power it up and whatnot, then you're in luck, because at that point, you can just use a software like this, which also, if you decide you want to run more than one NDI camera, um, you can have use the software to switch between them, and you don't always require a physical switcher, which can save quite a bit of money if you're going to go with the NDI side of things uh, by using the software program. If you're not using a software program, um, such as OBS Studios or something, uh, using a single camera, um, then that can change things up a little bit. You can also stream directly from our cameras to YouTube or to Facebook, um, which then you don't require the software and you don't technically require NDI technology. So um, if you are going to, say, connect more than one camera to your network, uh, typically most networks have people come in, especially in houses of worship or schools where they connect and it bogs down the network. Uh, for that reason, because uh, NDI, tech, NDI technology does use some bandwidth, uh, we use NDI HX, which is a, a better compression rate. It's up to 30 megabits per second. Um, but when you add more than one, it can develop latency issues or even uh, flickering issues overall on your network. 
you're going to want to create what's called a VLAN. So a VLAN basically is going to be a managed switch you would need, have to purchase in order to break out your cameras on a separate segment from the rest of your network, meaning that uh, yourself, uh, the people working there, uh, people, visitors, uh, can never connect to that segment of the network. It's its own little world. And that way, network traffic won't interfere with your stream causing crashes or, or issues with the, with the live stream itself, uh, which can be pretty bad if that happens. So again, the only real con to NDI technology is if you're gonna add more than one camera, you're gonna wanna have a managed network switch and you're gonna wanna um, make sure you create that VLAN uh, just for that specific reason. So to sum it up, if you're using a software stream, uh, you'd like to eliminate cable runs, this is a great way to accomplish it. Um, some networking skills required, a tech technical support, Steve here can always assist you. I'd be happy to help you as well. Feel free to give us a call here. Um, if you got any other questions regarding NDI technology, let us know. Uh, we do have a 4K NDI camera that's about to be released in the next week. So if you're interested in 4K NDI technology, we can help you out with that too. Um, feel free to give us a call here. Our sales team, our support team at BZB Gear, BZB Express is always willing and ready and excited to actually help you guys out with any of these questions. Um, that's it. So thanks for joining us here today. Let me know if you got any questions. Feel free to leave a comment. Feel free to give us a ring, email, whatever suits your uh, best interest there. We would love to hear from you. Uh, if you can, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Always appreciate it. Until next time, thanks guys. Have a good one.